So this will be Harry and William. Are they going to get back together again? Um, we'll see. I hope if you like the video, you do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, thank you very, very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So this is a viewer question and want to know, will William and Harry uh, be close again and how? So we'll ask that question. This is from uh, Larney Irvine. Thank you, Larney. Appreciate it. You know, it's a valid question. I wonder too. And then I think about uh, our own personal family relationships. How long have you been mad at a family member? How long have you avoided somebody that you didn't want to speak to? And were the stakes anywhere near as high as this? No. So, um, but you know what? They're brothers. And um, uh, if one fell down in front of the other one, you'd think he'd have to help him up, wouldn't you? So let's see. Um, will they be close again and how? Thanks, Larney. Irvine, I really appreciate it. Edition. This is uh, the second time I purchased from this group, uh, and uh, the, these cards are called Revival Art Tarot Second Edition. And uh, they're from Toracho uh, Studios, which you can see right here. And they come to me, for, I think it's from Russia via the Netherlands. But uh, they're a lot of money, and um, but they're beautiful cards, and you'll see. So they come in a very typical little cardboard box. No big deal there at all. Um, then the um, instruction booklet, again, is not uh, anything to write home about. It's just a typical little instruction booklet. The one good thing is that it is easily uh, read. And uh, in the... Uh, regular uh, in the lower arcana cards they've got an extra card in each uh, suit so you know you've got cups wands swords and uh, I can never think of the fourth suit off the top of my head uh, pinnacles uh, but so you, they go all the way to the ten of, of swords for instance the next one then should be a page but here we have a princess of swords and then after the princess of swords you still get the page the knight the queen and the king so you have one extra card for each of those four suits so instead of 78 uh, 79 uh, 80, 81, 82 cards total in the pack. So that's interesting. So if that princess um, confused you, you could just take those four cards out and use them for some special occasion or never use them at all, or put them in there. And uh, this gives you an idea of how to divine the extra card. Uh, so very interesting. Then the cards themselves, they're really good stock. Uh, once you get them broken in, and what I mean by that is, you know, when they come off uh, production, they're really pressed together and there's no air between the cards and you can't hardly get between them. So it takes a little bit of shuffling and, and getting them uh, some air between the cards uh, before they're usable, really, and, uh, and not sticking to each other. And then the back of them is beautiful and I haven't discovered anything particularly unusual about the back, um, except maybe until this very minute. Let's see. If you have the cards this way, you'll notice that there's a very small little rose right here. So if you see that small rose here up in the right-hand corner, then you know this card is going to be upright as it should. However, if this card was inverted, that small little rose becomes two roses. Okay, so if you see it, two roses up here rather than one, then you know that card is going to be inverted. So that's the example. Uh, I like knowing that. I don't know. It just gives you a little edge uh, when you're dealing the cards. And now I can straighten them out and not have to turn it over. I know that this, this is uh, inverted and this is straight. Now, to look at this art is amazing. And each one of these is a work of art that's referenced in the guidebook, for instance. Uh, if I look at this uh, Fool, number one, with the Major Arcana, and it tells me that the Fool uh, is, in fact, the name of that piece of art is called A Jester by Philippe Mercier. And, um, and then it gives me the uh, divination for the card, uh, beginnings, uh, possibilities, pleasure, etc. The next card, The Magician, if you were to see that one, that is a work of art called The Astronomer by uh, Candela. The Astronomer by Candlelight, and it's by, I guess it's going to be Gary Du. So uh, my foreign pronunciations aren't very good, but I do give it a try. So the cards themselves, you can see they go right to the edge of the card. They're beautiful pieces of art. And thought has gone into choosing these cards for the um, uh, position they stand for. The one thing uh, that's not uh, evidence, for instance, um, they're not always... Um, 
clear that, for instance, a two of pentacles is a two of pentacles. It might not have two pentacles on the card to tell you that. So they're a little um, interesting there. You should kind of look through the cards and understand what each one stands for first. But, I mean, look at them. They are absolutely beautiful. And it always feels to me like uh, intention has gone into making the selections of these actual pieces of art before uh, they uh, turn them into uh, tarot cards. And I like that. And I think you like them, too. Okay, so this is a pretty good question. Uh, Larney Irvine asks, uh, William and Harry, when will they be close again and how? William and Harry, when will they be close again and how? Thank you so much, uh, Larney, for asking that question. Uh, William and Harry, will they be close again? Will they be close again? You know, just like I said, um, haven't you been so upset with somebody that you wouldn't speak to them? And I bet the stakes were a lot less than what this this these are. So William and Harry, William and Harry, William and Harry, will you be close again? I mean, that's a valid question. Everybody wants to know that. And doesn't everybody think that probably they have to, you know, that that's inevitable? I mean, how can this rift stay forever? Um, I don't know, William and Harry. I mean, Charles and Diana found a way to, you know, co-parent. You know, they didn't have a choice. So they had worked out some kind of a system. Um, I don't know how well it worked, to tell you the truth. I wasn't paying that much attention at the time. So William and Harry uh, must have seen some of that. And, um, you know, kids know exactly what's going on. Um, and then after Diana was gone, that had to be certainly an adjustment. And wouldn't you think that they were closer to each other then than ever? Huh. And then, you know, being young men, their lives seem so intertwined. So... Will they be close again? Will they be close again? And I think we'll tackle the how in the latter part of this. So William and Harry, will you be close again? Will you be close again? I'm going to take six cards and see if this uh, answers. We might go ahead and do another four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's great. So, William and Harry, what in the world, guys? How can either of you think that to keep this um, festering is a good idea? So, William and Harry, will they be close again? Signifier card of this, who are you? Okay, so this is the Knight of Cups. All right, here we are right here. So, this is the Knight of Cups. So, in fact, we are talking about, uh, you know, Cups are... Uh, a lot of emotion, passion, um, can be obsessions even. But uh, this is the Knight of Cups, and like I, you'll always hear me tell you, is that of the royal uh, cards, uh, the Knight is the fellow who's given this thing to make happen. And so here we have this Knight uh, with his cups really spilling out. He's kind of looking over his shoulder, taking notes. You kind of get the idea that he's, he's wanting to kind of survey the area and, uh, and make sure that he remembers how things are. He's kind of like making a plan. So this night, to me, uh, looks like he's ready to gather up some information. And, uh, and that's what's going on. So I think both the brothers, at this point, are just surveying the area. They're just uh, trying to probably uh, evaluate their emotions. The challenge to this card is the uh, Two of Cups. Okay, that's, that's beautiful. You know, this also almost makes you think of um, the two wives, doesn't it? Uh, Kate and uh, Megan. So you've got the queen uh, right here, and then you've got the uh, duchess, uh, you know, potential future queen. Uh, forgive me. Some people are sensitive when I say that too soon, but in fact, she will be the queen. And uh, so you have uh, uh, Kate and then Megan right here. And uh, so it looks like there's this is challenged by the feelings of the women, and uh, we know who's going to have to come forward first and make all this better. Although I still don't really know if I sign on to Kate having a grudge. Uh, the base of this reading then is the uh, what is this? This is the Eight of Coins, and so the Eight of Coins is really you know uh, taking stock of everything that you've got there. I'm going to take a look at my cheat sheet just to make sure I get all the. Uh, divinations I want out of here. Yeah, motivation, education, perfecting skills. You know, it's really making sure that um, that you're, you're going to do this thing correctly, that you've got uh, this practiced, that you, you've worked it out as best you can. So the Eight of Coins, and it's interesting that this is depicted uh, by an old woman here. Isn't that interesting? The Eight of Coins. Who uh, would be their uh, example? It would be the Queen. But if the Queen uh, next to that, uh, for William at least, could that even be the Duchess uh, uh, um, 
Oh gosh, uh, Prince uh, Prince uh, Charles's uh, wife Camilla. Hmm, I'm not sure. Just a wizened uh, person in the base of that. In the past of this reading is the emperor. Of course it is. This is Charles. Uh, this is um, you know what's sort of overlooking this whole thing because we can't really actually think about their emotions without considering how this is affecting them. Okay, uh, so the sky of this reading then is going to be the Queen of Swords. I mean, these are some very auspicious cards that we're getting here. So this Queen of Swords, this is truth and justice and rules and law and getting things right. And um, I'd almost have to think that this is the Queen, um, actually. So top of this reading, uh, we're looking at, I think, if not direct involvement of the Queen, certainly um, influence of the Queen, just by just by knowing your grandmother and what she expects of you. Um, and remember, to Harry and William, she's granny. You know, she's not uh, first the queen, although probably more so for William than Harry. I don't know. And then the likely outcome of this whole thing is the Ten of Swords. Ah, you know, something has to end. Someone is going to have to submit to the other one, and we all know who that's going to have to be. You know, Harry has to submit to the uh, monarchy, really, which ends up being his brother, his father, and, of course, his grandma. So... That's what we've got there. Let's see if we can go ahead and get to the last part of that. How? And these last four cards. How? And I'm going to shuffle these up just a little bit. So it looks like the way this is going to happen is the Sussexes really are going to have to put forth a lot of reconciliation to the monarchy, and which just happens to be um, his brother, his dad, and his grandmother. I think that's really how this has to work out. And it could take a while to get there because you've got to remember his Harry's wife has been able to, with the support of her mother, put those other uh, negative forces uh, in, in the background. And they've even been distant to her. Her half-siblings are much older than she. And I don't think they all really grew up together, if so, for not very long. And then the father is such a distant figure. I know I said just a few times for these cards, but this is how I feel like I have to do this. Um, so how? 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 And yeah, it looks like there's a lot of reconciliation that has to come on there, and it has to come from the um, Sussexes. How? How? Uh, the signifier, or rather the um, self of that question, how is this going to happen? Okay, so this is the Three of Swords. Wow, it's a broken heart. Oh my goodness, don't tell me it's over the death of their grandmother. This is a broken heart. What's that in the, in the um, influence of justice? Yeah. So some understanding has to happen here of what justice is. I mean, Harry, I think, has to understand the justice of the truths that his uh, father and his brother have to live with that uh, awesome responsibility. And at the same time, there has to be some sort of a personal acknowledgement of the justice that Harry deserves, uh, not to have his family pestered to death. Um, you know, and yeah, I think that's it. And his 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 thing, respect his way of making that happen respected uh the the hopes and the fears of that uh is going to i've got two cards here so i pulled the last two cards the hopes and the fears of that okay that's the empress so the empress you know this could be the queen mother if you want to think this could be the mothers and both um uh kate and uh megan coming forth because megan no doubt has have a whole new experience with these two children of her own that she certainly must want to, you know, be raised up uh, with the influence and in the vicinity of her, their cousins. So this is the empress. This is the mother uh, in those women. This is uh, the queen. This is the just the natural mother nature. That's the hopes and the fears. And then the final outcome of this, oh, look at this. I've got to tell you, this two of coins for me, every time I see this card in several uh, drawings I've done in the a little bit back a bit, um, this card has shown up as Catherine. And I always see Catherine as gracefully carrying water for the monarchy. That's really how I see it. I think she she understands what she has to do. She has to give her strength to that cause. And I think then that this, it, maybe it's even behind the scenes, but this is going to be at the behest of um, Catherine's good work, I believe. That's how I see it. So, yeah, they'll come back together. It looks like it's going to be after a point of heartbreak, heartache. And then, um, and then um, you know, the, the instinct in these women might well up and, uh, and, all-knowing Catherine may make this happen behind the scenes. 
Okay, that's pretty interesting, uh, that read, and uh, just how it came out. So the signifier of that uh, was this uh, Knight of Cups, this Knight of Compassion, this Knight of Emotions, and I think it really is both the brothers right there. That Knight is both the brothers gathering up the wisdom, soaking up the knowledge of just experiencing this uh, rift that they've had, and uh, that will that will come to, to, to work for them later. They may not even realize that. The challenge of it is uh, this Two of Cups, and you know, the Two of Cups are, are, are friendships, partnerships, uh, sisters, brothers, and uh, these two women, one crowning herself, um, which is a little premature, and the other uh, really supporting her, you know, that's what's gonna have to happen there. Megan is gonna have to uh, show support for her sister-in-law. The base of this reading is this wizened woman with this Eight of Coins, making sure that she's got all these issues clearly defined and lined up and taken care of and understands what she's doing. This could be several women in that family. This could be uh, the mother of Megan. This could be uh, the mother of Catherine. This could be the queen. Um, but that's what we, or it could just be mother nature. Have them both line up, which may be actually what it is. And then the past of that reading was the emperor. And of course that's Charles. He overshadows all of this and he has hurt feelings. Uh, the sky of this reading uh, was then the Queen of Swords, and I really feel like this is the Queen. Uh, this is the overarching um, premise, uh, being the monarchy for everything, and then the likely outcome of the whole thing uh, is this Ten of Swords, which means this something has to end, okay? And um, the King is going to rule, and everyone else is going to acquiesce, okay? So the uh, the um, dignity it has to go to the top, really. Then the uh, self of that reading. Uh, was this uh, Three of Swords, which is just a broken heart, and so I wonder if this is going to happen around um, the Queen uh, leaving us. Um, in the environment of justice, yeah, it's only fair, it's only right, things get done the way they do. Both sides hopefully will see that and grant uh, some ease to uh, the Sussexes, and uh, they will understand their need to acquiesce to the monarchy. The hopes and the fears of that uh, is the Empress, and I think that's really just the mother nature, the instinct of both those mothers now, and the Queen, and their mothers, all the women coming together to understand there's something bigger to this than whatever it is right now. And then, but in the end, I think it's Queen Catherine, who I see always as gracefully, uh, dutifully, and ably carrying the water for that monarchy, as she pr will do for the rest of her life, and be rewarded for it, I'm sure. So that's what I get out of that. Kind of wordy. What do you think? I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now.